Hey, this is Joe from Home Studio Corner. One thing you should know about me, I love efficiency and I hate having to do things over. But this video is me doing something over because the first version of this video was very different and I had a very specific plan for it and it failed kind of spectacularly. I shot the video, edited the video, and realized I got to start over because this isn't what I thought it was going to be. We're going to talk about that today because there's a couple of lessons there that can help you hopefully avoid making some pretty expensive mistakes. So more on that in just a second. But first, I want to invite you to a free webinar that I'm doing on June 15th. So it's been a long time since I've done a live training like this. I'm really excited to do it. It's June 15th, Thursday at 8 p.m. Central Time, and we're going to cover nine home studio mistakes. I've made almost all of these mistakes a number of times, or I've seen people make these same mistakes over and over again, and they're really hindering their progress. It's like a roadblock. You can't get to where you want to go if you keep making these mistakes, but we can have blinders, right? It can be hard to see that you're making these mistakes, and so you just keep doing the same thing, making the same mistakes, and getting the same results. So in this live training, I'm going to go over each of those mistakes and how to avoid them to move past those obstacles and start making the best music of your life. It's 100% free training. I would love for you to attend. Again, the date is Thursday, June 15th, 8 p.m. Central Time. Uh, the link to register is homestudiocorner.com slash register. That will get you into the event. And if you can't make it live, that registration link will also get you into the replay so you can watch it later. The only people who get to see the replay are the people who register. So go to that link now, homestudiocorner.com slash register, and I'll see you on the webinar. All right, so here's the story. The plan for this video was originally to be high-end tube preamps versus stock preamps, meaning something that costs a couple thousand dollars, microphone preamp versus the preamps that are built into your audio interface or mixer. So I set everything up. I recorded my voice through the stock preamp on my Studio Live mixer and through a nice high-end preamp over here. Um, it's discontinued now, so it doesn't really matter what it is, but it probably sold for about $2,000 when it was new. And the goal was I was going to record it, and then we were going to listen, and we were going to kind of bask in the glory of how much better the tube preamp sounded compared to the stock preamp. And I knew that the stock preamp is good enough, and you can do great work with it, but I was playing the angle of, but listen to how great this sounds. If you can afford it, you need to buy a high-end preamp at some point. Everybody loves a good versus video, right? A good dual, you know, stock versus tube. But the problem was once I recorded it and I sat down to listen and I was shooting the video and saying, okay, here's the tube, listen to that. And then here's the stock preamp, listen to that. Listen to how it sounds. Oh, it actually sounds pretty similar. Like really similar, like embarrassingly similar. So. Uh, that was when I started, I tried to power through it and kind of almost fake my way to the end of the video, like pr almost pretending I was hearing differences that I probably wasn't hearing. And the, my, my better judgment prevailed and I scrapped the whole thing. So in this video, I want to show you that that was the, the basic story. I want to show you the reality of what happened. I want you to hear it for yourself and we're going to talk about it because it's a really cool, it kind of gives me goosebumps, sort of a lesson. Um, but it's also requires a little bit of humility to do it because it's not the message maybe that you want it to be. Uh, let's talk about it. Here are the two vocals that I recorded. The top one is the stock preamp, the X-Max preamps on the Studio Live. The bottom one is the high-end tube preamp. Now, I recorded it two separate takes. I didn't like split the microphone into two preamps. I don't have the gear to do that. I don't really care. Um, but I can sing fairly consistently, so I just sang the same part once through one preamp, once through another, and then tried my best to level match them um, so we can have a somewhat fair comparison. So I'm just gonna play it for you, just the raw vocal, starting with the stock preamp and then switching over to the tube. As long as you don't take a look inside. As long as you don't take a look inside. 
So there are technically differences here, and we could get into the minutia of what they are, but probably the biggest one, if we just flip back and forth between these two, you'll hear the red one, the tube one, has, a, has more low end. It literally has more low frequencies to it, which is part of that warmth that we talk about with higher end tube preamps and things like that. Listen to it again, I'll just flip back and forth. As long as you don't take a look inside. So it's got this kind of woof woof, kind of this punchy, almost kick drum type low end to it that on the surface is pretty cool. As long as you don't. And it's it's a good sounding preamp, it sounds delightful. There's a, in the top end, there's a little more smoothness on this one than maybe on the stock preamp, but. As long as you don't. The, top, the stock preamp is maybe a little brighter, a little crisper, but it, it's not night and day. And here's, the, here's where it really just kind of hang, came home for me. Uh, check this out, I put a EQ on my mix bus. So uh, both of these are going through this same EQ. And with the EQ, I rolled off everything below like 240 or so. Now, that's a little aggressive for a vocal mix, but remember, if this like this this vocal is going into like a rock song with like a bunch of guitars, drums, bass. So this sound as long as you don't as big and beefy and wonderful as it is, is not the sound that it needs to be in the mix, right? That's interfering with all the kick drum, the bass guitar, and a lot of the guitar tones, because it's just like, whoa, 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 whoa. So yeah, it sounds cool here by itself, but that's completely not useful in a mix. In a mix, I'm gonna be rolling off that low end. It's just not useful. The vocal needs to occupy mid-range and high mids. It doesn't need to occupy deep low end. If this was an acapella thing and this was the bass track, sure, that's not what this is. So with an EQ on it, where I just kind of rolled off the low end, it starts to really level the playing field here. So if I bring it up to around, let's just say 250 or so, because it was a pretty beefy track, now let's listen to, we'll start with the stock t preamp and then the tube. Check out the differences. As long as you don't take a look inside. As long as you don't take a look inside. And as we pull the high pass filter back to let maybe a little more low end in it, the main difference is just that there's more low end in the tube than the stock. As long as you don't. As long as you don't. As long as you don't, as long as you don't. Just a little bit, not even that much. And there's there's a different kind of frequency sound. The, maybe there's a little more mid-range in the stock and maybe a little less in the tube, but it is not a huge difference. And then especially if we drop this onto a mix, it, we hear the differences even less. So in reality, most of us are recording music and vocals that are meant to be in a mix with a bunch of other stuff. So... How it sounds by itself is almost irrelevant because it, what really matters is how it sounds in the mix. So if anything, there is a slight difference between the two. And you could make the argument that, yes, but if I use the same tube preamp across 30 tracks and each of those sounds slightly better, then I'm getting a cumulative effect. And that's a pretty good argument. But still, just listening here, you've heard it. It's not like one is garbage and one is heavenly. It's one is good and one is also good. Okay, so what's the point, right? Am I just bashing all high-end preamps or all the professionals who use them uh, just selling snake oil? No, I don't think so. But a big takeaway for me is being willing to, as I believe Stephen King put it, kill your darlings. So my assumption was that's gonna sound infinitely better than this. Turns out it was just different, but not really better. Um, scientists do this all the time. They have a hypothesis and then they do an experiment and then it's either supports the hypothesis or disproves it. And either way, it's good because science happened and we moved one step closer to knowing something. Um, it's hard to do that in your personal life. I can speak from experience. I had a professor in college who talked about if you believe in something, then it should be able to withstand um, testing, right? If I blindly believe something, if I truly believe it, then I should be able to test it and it should hold up. And if it doesn't hold up to testing, then it probably isn't worth believing. So that's getting way too deep and theoretical for a video about 
music and tube preamps, but um, a lot of times our beliefs can make us hear differences in something that maybe aren't there. And by taking a step back and being willing to say, maybe it's not as big of a difference as I thought, I feel like I learned a lot and I probably am helping you learn a lot as well, which is cool. So here, here's the bigger takeaway. Channel strips like this are certainly useful. I'm still going to use this thing. Primarily, one of the, my favorite ways to use it is because it has compression and EQ on it as well. So I can shape the tone as I'm recording it. So if I need to record like a beatbox kick drum, boom. Boom. And I need more low end, I can crank the low end on the preamp, um, on the EQ on the preamp to give it to me right as I record it. So I'm recording it like I want it to sound in the mix with the source material already sounding like I want. Or if it's background vocals, I can remove a lot of low end so that they're airy and crisp and bright, which is how I want them to be in the mix anyway. So it's a tool to help me get it right at the source even more than just with the microphone choice and mic placement. So I'm not digging on, I'm not dissing on uh, external preamps and expensive preamps. If you want them, go for it. But here's what I would say. I would argue there are things that you can spend your money on that have a big bang for the buck, meaning you have absolutely, you can hear a difference, and there are things that are more minimal. Where you may not hear a difference, it might be only a slight difference. So in the slight difference camp are things like new preamps, um, another one of the same type of microphone, uh, converters, like, let me get new converters and it'll change everything. It probably won't. Now, big bang for the buck stuff are things like instruments. When I buy a new guitar, it's typically one that doesn't sound like any of my other guitars, and it inspires the crap out of me from a music standpoint, and it also gives me all new tones to use in my songs. So I could literally go down my discography and say, oh yeah, that's the album I did when I bought that Telecaster, and it's all over it, and I was learning how to use it, and I love it. Oh, here's when I got my 335, and I used it all over this album. Here's when I had the Helix, and I used that one amp model that I really loved. So buying new equipment inspired me, specifically new instruments, inspires me to no end. So I am all for, you may think I'm like a curmudgeon who doesn't want you to ever buy anything. That's not true. I just, if you're going to buy something, make sure it actually has an impact. So a guitar for me, endless impact. A new preamp, eh, minimal to no impact. I have people offering me free plugins all the time. Plugin companies. They want me to review them on my channel. I get it. I just don't care. Because the plugins that I use get great sounds, and I get more excited about a guitar or a looper pedal than I do an EQ that sounds slightly different. That's just me. You can do your own thing. You don't have to do what I do, but that's what works well for me. Microphones to a point can be a bang for the buck item. So if all you have is a condenser, then buying a dynamic mic or a ribbon mic can give you just a whole different set of sounds from the same source. So that can be cool, but to a point. At some point, the microphones all kind of sound the same. If it's, you know, if you have six dynamic mics, they're probably all pretty similar. But if you only have a condenser, then a dynamic might be a good addition to your arsenal to give you more sounds. And then probably the biggest bang for the buck, in my incredibly biased opinion, is training. Learning how to use what you already have to get incredible sounds. I did an in-person event recently, and we talked about what obstacles are in your way from making the music you want to make. And there were all kinds of, of, of answers, but the one answer I didn't hear was, my equipment isn't good enough. It's not because I was in a room full of people with high-end, really expensive studios. It was because they had learned from me that the big variable in how great your music sounds is probably not which microphone you're using. As much as the magazines and the ads want you to believe otherwise, the real difference is how you're able to use that equipment to get the results that you want, how you're able to hear music and make the sound in your head come out of the speakers through the way that you manipulate the gear that you already own. You already own most likely everything you need to make incredible sounding music. So if you're not already making incredible sounding music, then the variable is you and you need to learn how to do that. And that's what I offer here at Home Studio Corner. Hopefully you've gotten a taste of that today. Um, honestly, if I were to go like try to get sponsors for big high-end equipment, I could probably make a lot of money doing that. But I listened to it and the result is I don't 
know if I could get behind that in that sort of a way. I would rather give you information that's truly helpful to you. And that's why I'm doing this live training. I'm uh, the homestudiocorner.com slash register for that webinar that we're doing on June, what is it? June 15th at 8 p.m. Go register. Come hear about these mistakes. Learn how to avoid them. And I'm also opening up my VIP membership to new members uh, on that webinar. So um, it's a thing you can't join except during that one week of the webinar. So make sure that you come or at least sign up so you can get the video and learn more about these mistakes, how to avoid them, how to transform the music you're making, and how to come be a part of my VIP community, which is the best audio community on the planet. Uh, I, I just get goosebumps thinking about them. And I'd love for you to be a part of it. So one more time, homestudiocorner.com slash register. Come to the event. It's going to be a lot of fun. If it's not at a good time for you, register anyway, and then I'll send you the video recording of it after the fact so you can get in on the fun. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you around.